Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Coaching and Consulting Insight Series on the Success Insight Podcast. The Coaching and Consulting Insight Series introduces you to coaches and consultants that work with leaders, entrepreneurs, business owners, and professionals to create their best life and achieve and perform at their full potential. Our guest today is Kim Wilkish. Kim is a leadership coach and founder of New Tides Coaching. She is passionate about helping people thrive in their career by developing their personal leadership without sacrificing their well-being or personal life. Kim, it is a pleasure to have you on the Coaching and Consulting Insight Series. Welcome. Thank you for thank you for having me, Howard. Fantastic. And for our listeners, and as I usually say, in the spirit of full disclosure, I have known Kim for, I feel like, many years now. We were in coach training together way back when at Field and Graduate University. And it was so great to catch up with you, Kim. Yeah, it was. I really enjoy seeing how far we've come since we first met, Howard. That's it's it's amazing. We all come into the coaching journey for a variety of reasons. I definitely want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but and you and I, and we we've, we've had opportunities to kind of get together at some fielding events. I know you visited Chicago when I was there, and. I think that it was this past uh, month or two ago on LinkedIn, you were you were speaking about this card deck, and my 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 eyes perked up a little bit as I was reading this. Oh, that's pretty cool. And so, first off, you're not working in the pharma world anymore, are you? So you're for producing these uh, wonderful decks. Yeah, no, like things happen. I got laid off a couple of years back from the pharma company, saw that coming. So I took advantage since the timing aligned with the COVID shutdown of everything and decided to do something fun. So I created this card deck and I've used it with some of my clients and other people. And it's a great reminder for people in leadership positions to remember to take care of themselves, take a pause, and also have leadership insights for themselves on how they lead, how they create visions, and how they create culture for their teams. Fantastic. And I love how you just shared prior to this layoff happening, you saw it coming. And that is actually very fortunate because some of us don't see it coming. It's a total blindside. Uh, and at least by seeing it coming, you could uh, begin to make some preparations for it. And with this this deck, uh, Becoming a Leader uh, card deck, uh, Becoming and Being a Leader card deck, let mm -hmm. me get that right. Had this been kind of an idea that's had been in a, a, a coaching approach that had been floating around over the years and how did this card deck, and for our listeners, we're going to see it shortly. I'm going to, we're going to do things a little differently. We're going to go right to uh, the work that Kim is doing in just a minute. But how did this card deck begin to take fruition? So I was coaching people in many different scenarios. I was a manager of a global team. We had gone through mergers and acquisitions. I was also supporting a merger and acquisition. And through that, it was interesting to see how people were responding to the changes in the organization's leadership and the different leadership styles that everybody who's a leader has. Um, and so the idea started percolating and people would ask me, what do I need to do to develop? How do I develop in my career? What's the next step? And from working with them on where they wanted to go, these ideas kind of came to me that were central. They're just central things that were intuitive to me as I was leading teams that may not be intuitive right away to someone else who's thrown in, into a management role, as an example. 
and trying to really understand what it is they have to do and how do you corral the cats, <laughs> sort of say, and um, get them to work together and what is the vision for the group and the team. So I came up with this card deck and in light of all of the reductions in force I've seen, mergers and acquisitions, I mean, I've been at four companies that have been bought and sold and that's a whole other story. But one of the biggest lessons I learned from that was to have compassion for yourself. And most people don't realize that going through those roller coasters, there's actually a grieving process they're going through as well. Sure. Yeah. And sure. understanding that have compassion for yourself when today, ever post COVID, we're all still stressed out working from home and don't know how to balance it all or going back to the office and we're just overwhelmed and tired. So these are the cards are just nice pictures with just a simple saying on them. And there's more depth with the deck as well that you can do a further inquiry or meditation on. But they're just nice that if you want to remember, remind yourself to celebrate your wins, as an example, you could just put that up on your desk. And it's just a quick reminder. I love it. Uh, I tell you what, why don't we go out to the, uh, to the platform where we can uh, get the deck. Let's take a look at it. Okay. So for our listeners, this is the, the little nuance, the curve I threw myself today as I was getting ready with Kim. She's going to share the deck. All right. So tell us, wh where are we right now? Uh, what kind of website are we at? So I have the deck, physical deck is for sale on my website. Okay. But this past year, we've been working with this gentleman who's a creator named Nick Kellett. And he's created an app that's called Deckable. And okay. his idea behind Deckable is to have a collection of the card decks you have, because most people who buy card decks tend to have more than one. Of course. And it's hard to carry them with you. Whereas if you have them all in a digital application, you can carry them with you on your phone, which is pretty cool. I love so it. the application is... You get to see it on, on your desktop on deckable.com. There's also, it's also an app you could buy on Google Play or download for free at this time and on Apple, the Apple store where you can find your, your apps. So it's pretty cool. In this case, I searched for my own deck. So that's okay. why you can only see mine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and it's called the Becoming and Being a Leader de card deck. And right now it's listed under the genre of mindfulness. And okay. I have, a, there's 54 decks in the entire card, but one's an introduction and one kind of talks about how to use the deck. And okay. then the others are the cards. So this is the cover of what the box, the digital box looks like. <laughs> okay. Kim, I want to stop you for one second. Okay. So it's 54 cards in the deck. Yep. Okay. But okay. there's 52 that you would actually use. 52. Okay. So one's like the cover and the other one's like, here's how you use the deck. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So there's um there's the, the deck itself. And basically it has, you can use it as a meditation. He's building in capabilities. So you can actually journal on the decks mm. too, which okay. is nice. I like that. Yeah. And um, you can just pull a deck. You can do different different draws as well. So this is what my, the back of my box looks like with just some information about me. Okay. And then this is what the actual cover of the, all the cards look like. Okay. Okay. So a couple, cool. a couple of the cards have uh, in this viewing of it you'll see a couple of the cards the, on the back side so okay. this one says have a leader's mindset and if you have the digital version and actually are looking at the deck open and not just the preview here there's another side what's cool about the digital decks is that you could have more than two sides to a card whereas the right. physical deck you can only have one and two gotcha. and 
so the third slide actually has has a bit of a description about the deck and it has some questions for you to inquire on so okay having having the leader's mindset what does that mean what does that look like to you things like that and then this one is know your value and your worth oftentimes okay. people think that they know what their value is or their worth but when you actually think about all the things that you do daily as a person in your job sometimes you surprise yourself and if you're leading others your value is so much different than a worker bee sure sure you know i love it and nourish your body mind and soul one of those well-being practices that sometimes we get too busy and we spend the day at our desk go 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 <laughs> me 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 guilty of that <laughs> you need to take a break just to restore your energy and replenish yourself of course and then this card I particularly love is define what success is for you. We have okay. so many ideas of what success is as a culture, mm -hmm. but sometimes we actually need to sit down and say, what does it mean to me? Am I doing all this working hard, running to keep up with the Joneses? Is it something that I really want? And especially now in this time of high inflation, a right. lot of people are really questioning where they stand and what's really important to them. Oh, yeah. 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 Very good. And another one is to build your strength and your resilience. I took this picture, these, this picture um, from one of our favorite beaches in Nantucket, and the erosion has just overtaken parts of that island. So the tree's like holding on. <laughs> yeah. Well, that brings up another uh, question I have. Uh, and after we kind of get through this deck, is I'd like to hear about how, uh, more about how the pictures came about. Are these, were these yours? Did you uh, get those from some other source? Because I, I love the pictures, love them. Yeah, most of the pictures are mine. There's one or two that I borrowed from either a daughter or another source. My daughter loves taking pictures. I love um, it. But most of them are mine and I love the beach the beach is where i personally go to decompress so i wanted my the pictures for the cards to be calming uh -huh. so it also helps to take that uh, breath throughout the day uh, i love it i love it and then i have one of the draws you can do on my deck so you can actually on the deck itself shuffle the decks on on the apple app you could shuffle them, you could pick cards, you could pick a drawer. So I have a, these three that I picked, Aware, Assess, and Grow, which I created. So when you do your cards, you shuffle them, you could put three on a spread, and there's questions that you can ask yourself regarding just building awareness. How are you doing at this topic? <laughs> and what could you do to grow or do better? I love it. I yeah. love it. Very good. Well, great introduction to it. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing. And, and, and for our listeners, you're going to have all the backlinks uh, to not only Kim's website, but also to Deckable. And and for our listeners, this, this, something's going through my head right now is I'm going to find some way to get a deck or two out there. Uh, if you have listened to this episode and you go out to, for example, Apple podcast where you listen to your podcast. And if you like share and comment on this episode, uh, we'll figure out a way to get you a deck. Now it's going to be two or three decks, but we'll figure that out. But that's, what's going through my head as I, as I'm seeing this, cause this is wonderful. Well, Kim, thank you for sharing this. You're welcome. Thank you for having me show you. Yeah. Let's go back. Cause I want uh, our listeners to learn a little bit more uh, about you. So you had mentioned earlier, or first off, you, you had mentioned your your daughter likes to take pictures. When I first met Kim way back when, mm. uh, she used to carry her do her daughter. Okay, so that, that tells you how long Kim and I've known each other. Uh, and uh, is she in college yet? No, she's a sophomore in high school, though. Oh, oh my God! Okay, yep. so oh boy, oh boy. Uh, I tell you what, we're both getting older. My nephew just had 
a, a baby. So now I have a, a great, uh, a great, uh, a new great niece. Unbelievable. Awesome. Unbelievable. I don't like getting old, by the way. You should have a card deck that talks about how do we get old gracefully and love it. So that's your next assignment. So, okay. so how did you end up deciding to go through coach training? I'm curious about that. Oh, I've been involved and interested in coaching for a long time. Um, let's see. In 2000, the year 2000, I was working at the time for a, a company and we were doing so many projects that were cross-functional in mm -hmm. a highly matrix organization. And I was finding that because I was in the compliance role, I was working and pulling people together from an IT perspective and the different business units to find out what their needs were in order to put computer systems out to support their business. And what was really interesting is that my big learning was that we have so many talented people and our educational systems and our work systems really have us go deep in a subject, but we don't always go broad across subjects. So the business folks would talk about their business needs in business talk. The IT folks would be talking about their things in code and technical language. And I found I was often playing the bridge between trying to yeah. translate the two, even though I didn't have a technical IT background. So what was really interesting about that experience and working with these people was that I really wanted to understand how to get different groups to talk to each other but also communicate in a way their brilliance for lack of a better way of saying it. Cause these were brilliant, brilliant people that were really just struggling on working on the projects and the systems and things. So I decided I was interested, what is this coaching thing? I had heard about it. So I joined at the time, the International Coach Federation and started attending local meetings and got a taste. And then I came across a conference and my boss was really awesome and let me go. It wasn't just coach focused, but it was also on change, managing change and things of that nature. And from there, I got a taste of a coaching school. Hmm. And then I went to another conference and got their version of coaching. So there were differences. There were little nuanced differences. Oh yeah, And eventually I decided I, I want to learn more about this. So after many, many years of different conferences, I then wanted to find a program that I could get college credit for if I decided to be crazy enough to go for my PhD. <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. I know. I didn't get my PhD yet and I haven't stepped into that pond, but I had worked my way and paid my own way through college for undergrad. I got smart when it came to the master's degree and got my company to pay, but there's so many different flavors of coaching out there that I wanted. I wanted a school that was reputable, that was based in theories and evidence, which is mm -hmm. why I picked fielding and how I got involved. And what's funny is my coaching skills. I used him as project manager. I used him as a manager of people. I used him supervising people, leading others, working with peers, working with higher ups. Those skills are so transferable in so many different ways that for me, I saw the difference it made in those people. Mm -hmm. And that's what lit me up. So that's how I, how I got involved and how I went to coaching school and continued using it throughout and then um, started acquiring clients and working with them on the side, which was great. I love it. I love it. One of the uh, segments in our uh, podcast episode is often the aha moment. And I usually have that towards the end, but you just mentioned something is using these coaching techniques in a variety of settings, whether it's facilitating a workshop, a 
doing project management, uh, helping two disparate groups kind of learn to work together. How did you begin to realize, wow, this is starting to make a difference? So it's kind of like, what was your aha moment when you start to see the people that you're interacting with as a coach in a, to a certain extent uh, versus being the manager? Okay. Yep. What was that aha moment when you start to realize, wow, this worked? Yeah. So as a, as a coach, I think the biggest advantage you have is that you get to work with people and stretch them outside of their comfort zone and share ideas and question them in a way that they start to think bigger than their role they're in in their situation. So it opens them up to bigger, bigger possibilities. And then once you start getting people thinking along what are those possibilities or what is it that I really, really want in my life, then from there is when you can really help them to grow and elevate them. And you're elevating them because sometimes they didn't think of themselves. They think of themselves on one level. But when they mm -hmm. start looking at the opportunities that are out there and what's bigger or what they're really interested or passionate about, um, all of a sudden windows and doors open <laughs> right. and you see them go, wow, okay. Especially the longer you've been working in a particular job or area, because you tend to get sucked in, like I said earlier, to the depths. And sometimes you need someone to pull you up by the back of your collar and say, hey, come up, look around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. How did you grow as a coach through your journey? I mean, you've, you've talked about working for a new number of pharmaceutical companies, and, and I totally understand mergers and acquisition. It's like mm -hmm. it's just a part of the deal. Yeah. How did you grow as a coach and consultant and continue to get better at what you were doing as these events are going on all around you? Yeah. So um, after fielding or even prior to, I've always had a coach, which has been extremely helpful, but I've also continued my education and coaching. So I got involved and became a member of the Institute of Coaching that's sponsored outside of Harvard. And, I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah and McLean Medical School. Um, so that that's been a wonderful organization. ICF, of course, has their continuing education programs. It's been doing that, taking courses, working with other coaches, and just expanding my own skill set. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. What besides you've got the conferences, you've got the courses, working with other coaches. What what are some of the skill sets that you have uh, leaned into and, and grown some capabilities around that have kind of helped to continue to transform you? Because now, I mean, you've left the, you've left the, the safety net, or they they basically said, "Okay, you're done. Goodbye." Be free. <laughs> now, yeah, be free. Now you're you're an entrepreneur. That's a whole different. Yep. Uh, uh game so how did this education these relationships that you have been building over the years how is that beginning to inform your new role as the founder of new tides coaching i mean you're mm -hmm. you're the you're the business right now yeah no one of the biggest things i've done is actually joined a, a couple masterminds with other yeah. entrepreneurs which has been amazing because you're, you're in it with them. You get to share your ideas with them and ask for help. <laughs> Where do you need it? How do I do this? So that has been tremendous um, for sure. Also just listening to how other people work through some of their business challenges. That I think is amazing from the setting up the back the back of the computer stuff, the systems to put in place, to the marketing aspect, 
reaching out to people and saying, hey, I do this now, that, that's a huge one. And even keeping in touch with my former network and, and talking with them. Sometimes I'll still have someone call me up and say, I know this is probably not what you do anymore, but what do you think about X, Y, C? And can I bounce some ideas off of you? And I'm always willing to do that. So it's fun for me because I kind of stay up to date on what's going on in the industry, mm -hmm. but it's also allows me to really grow in a whole different way um, and really understanding what it is that I do and how how the skills that I have have been extremely helpful, but the other areas that I might not be as strong in and learning that as I grow. Sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, there's so much more we have to be aware of. And we, 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 I often will hear, oh, I just want to coach. I don't want to worry about the sales and the marketing. Oh, okay. I get that. <laughs> but you're going to need some support to help get you the business or to help manage the business that you are getting. And it's yeah. uh, people don't realize, and I, I will put my hand up as well, but way back when I had no idea. And uh, sometimes I wish I had gone back to not to get the master's degree in leadership development, but to get the, uh, the MBA mm -hmm. <laughs> that might've worked a little bit better. So talk to us about New Tides Coaching. Tell, what, what is New Tides Coaching? What services are you providing? Who's your ideal client? Tell us about that. Okay, so I will say the MBA helps, but it doesn't give you everything. Right. Because I have that. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say New Tides Coaching, for me, it is my coaching practice where I primarily work with professional women. Occasionally there's a guy in there, but most of the time it's professional women that are either in leadership roles or aspire to be in leadership roles that are um, struggling with how to manage their day to day or how to communicate better. Or sometimes it's just a matter of helping them understand when and how to communicate things. I was reading an article the other day about confidence and women who are very strong in their confidence sometimes are looked down at as like they're faking it or trying too hard. Whereas mm -hmm. other, other people perceive women as having very lack, a lack of confidence in their jobs and competency in their role. And it's, women lead differently than men. I mean, there's a lot of similarities, but there are differences there. And, um, Sometimes I think, at least for the people who I coach with, they're a little more empathic and understanding of what's going on with the whole person in front of them and themselves and the people who they're leading, as opposed to just trying to march towards a business objective. Okay. Okay. Now, when you deliver coaching, uh, is it mostly one-on-one? -on -one? Is it group coaching, team coaching? How, how are you delivering this? So primarily right now, it's been um, personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay. Um, I'm looking to develop a program that will involve more people and potentially do group coaching and bringing other women leaders together so they can start to network more with other leaders. You know, I love that. I have found that, and men as well, but especially women, it's it's really helpful for them to be around other women who are going through the same struggles that they're going through because guys can come into the room to a certain extent and we kind of overwhelm everybody because that's just our personality. People like me just sit in the back of the room and, and observe everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think with it's nice to have a safe place for women, but they also need to be around men too in, yep. in, in, in uh, roles where they're networking, getting involved. But I love the fact that uh, there's eventually going to be an opportunity for them to to grow into their full potential. That's wonderful. Now, what are some of the, uh, on your, I was noticing on, on the website, 
Uh, mm-hmm. and we're going to give the backlinks to our listeners in just a little bit. What are some of the services or features on the website that you are providing to the folks that, that go out there and visit you? Yeah, so um, I have a couple of resources that are available on the website. There's a couple articles that are there for people. I have the card deck. There's a journal that also goes with the card deck. And I, of course, do one-on-one coaching with people. One thing I'd, I'd like to say, Howard, that I think is important is my entire career, I have been one of maybe a handful of women, if that. Mm. So in most of the leadership roles I played, I was probably one of five, if that, of the leadership team that was female. So, and IT at the time was very much male dominated. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But the other part that I find interesting is that, especially growing as a working mother, is you also have that invisible workload as a woman. The right. keep in the house, taking care of the kids, and how the heck do you balance it all without losing your sanity? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. In your uh, show notes, and for our listeners, before I, I meet with uh, a guest on the podcast, they, they get a questionnaire. Uh, mm-hmm. And whether it's the coaching consulting questionnaire, sometimes it's focused more on my other podcast for the outdoors. And But one question I always ask is there's the uh, aha moment, the insight to go, but it, sometimes we ask our our, uh, our guest about kind of that scary moment or that mm-hmm. book that they're going to read. And so Kim, uh, I asked Kim about her scary moment. And the reason I'm asking is there's this idea of intuition. Mm-hmm. And so if, are you, if you're open to sharing a little bit about yeah. this, yeah, but and I want to get into the the importance of intuition as well, coming off of that story. Yeah, no, um, God. Yeah, I was going on a business trip over to France and was at Logan Airport, walking through security and all of that, grabbing my bags, exchanging my money. And as I was walking towards the gate area, um, they have TVs all along throughout the terminal. All of a sudden, all of the TVs were showing breaking news. And the breaking news was that there was a terrorist attack happening in Paris at the time. It was happening at that moment. People were getting killed. There were shootings. It was not pretty. And as I continued walking towards the gate, they were then talking about what are they going to do? The police were all there. Maybe they, they don't know who the people are that are causing this attack. Or maybe they're going to shut down the planes. The flight might not go. Airports may close. So they, then there was talk of closing the border. And I'm like, well, what happens if you fly over to seas, all the way over to sea, overseas and They close the border on you. Do you just get stranded at the airport or do you land in another country? I mean, I had no idea. Right. And um, I was trying to reach my boss at the time because I wasn't feeling great about the situation. Of course. (laughs) And wasn't having much success. And I called my husband and was talking to him. So he was aware. But, you know, I told him I'd call him when I made a decision what I was going to do if the flight was still a go or not. And as the time was going by, I said to myself, I I don't think I want to go. But I was with another colleague and he's like, well, the Boston Marathon, the day after was the safest. And I went, yeah, that's a philosophy, but I don't know. I don't really feel comfortable. We're talking about a foreign country here. Right. So... My husband then picked my daughter up at daycare and she hadn't heard anything about any of this. And I called him and all of a sudden my daughter said, don't go. You can't go, mommy. It's not safe. (laughs) What do you mean? Now I've been traveling since my daughter was, gosh, six months old. And she's never had a problem with me travel. She just says, call me or whatever. And she's like, don't go. It's not safe. You can't go. And she was starting to get kind of frenetic on the phone about it. And I said, honey, what's wrong? Why, why are you so scared? 
And she's like, it's just not safe. You can't go. And I, I turned to my coworker at that moment. And I said, my own gut was telling me no way in hell. I don't really want to go. The situation's not great. But my daughter's reaction, I don't know, maybe the spirits are telling these young kids something that I don't have the open hearing to hear or something, but... There's this intuition going on here. Oh, there's this, the hair sticking up on my arms and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm canceling. I'm not going. And my boss finally got through and I told them as such. I said, I, I'm, I don't feel comfortable. I'm not going to go. Because once I landed in France, I was then supposed to take a two-hour train ride. So I, I wasn't about to do that. So I bailed out of the flight and I was really, really happy that I did. I just felt so much better making once I made that decision. And sure. what's, in, what's interesting is the, you get that gut feel. Yeah. You get that gut feel. You're just not sure why but you have a gut feeling and then as you're hearing more and more and more information unfold it starts getting a little louder right right and then it, my intuition was just amplified by my daughter's reaction which was so out of the norm for her you gotta listen to that you gotta sure. listen to that because even with the simple everyday everyday world we're in there are times where you just get that gut feel yeah I I have been on phone calls, continuing education calls for our coaching and folks chatting about the the gut and the gut is the connection to the heart and then you got the head and mm -hmm. and every time and when I hear stories like what you have just shared, it strengthens my belief that there is some connection here and maybe we can't, we don't know exactly where it's originating from, but there's a connection there that, sh that, you know, may, some people are there, whatever their empathy or empathetic nature, it shows up in different places for me, for you. It's definitely the gut. I mean, when I'm asked to do something I really don't want to do, I mean, like moving from Chicago to Las Vegas. Okay. Mm. That could be a gut wrencher, but I'm like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> I'm going to do that and I'm fine with it. But if I get asked to do something that I don't want to do and it goes against my values, oh yeah, then my gut just starts churning like crazy. And, uh, and I think that there's something there. And I think it's worthwhile for folks to explore what that really means. So uh, I do appreciate you sharing that story because I, uh, it, that was, it, it really rated for me that, yeah, there's something there. And, uh, but just manifested even deeper through through your daughter, however that came about. Yeah, it's funny. I went to one of the conferences years ago at Harvard, and there was a integrative medical doctor presenting. And he was funny in that he says, we actually have three minds. We have the physical brain that's in our head, but we also have some cells that are similar to brain cells in our heart and also in our GI tract. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so when people say that you have that gut intuition or you feel it in your chest or you got it in your head, he's like, there are connections. There are definitely connections there. We just don't know all the physiology yet. Yeah. And I think someday we are going to hopefully mm. learn more about it. I love that. Now, uh, just before we kind of head out today, I want to make sure that uh, our, our listeners uh, get the full benefit of spending some great time with you, Kim. Uh, any other insights that you would like to share with our listeners based on, I mean, you're a, you're a businesswoman, uh, now an entrepreneur, spent a lot of time in corporate America and the, and the health in the health space, having been on that side of the, the fence as well. It's no small feat that uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, you survived. So congratulations on that. And and now your creative uh, juices are flowing with the, with this wonderful uh, becoming and being a leader a card deck. So what insights do you have for someone who perhaps, perhaps is contemplating making their own change in their life and just how they manage their lives on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I would say... Um... You got to take time to play. You got to take time to play and you have to rest. 
the, that years ago when I was a kid, all the stores were closed on Sunday until people pushed for it. But that day of rest is so important. We're lucky if we even give ourselves 15 minutes in some cases. So mm-hmm. we need to do that in order to keep our, our mental well-being and our physical well-being and our emotional well-being in, in tune. Um, and with that being said, I've also have de- designed and developed a personal uh, well-being checkup that people can do on their own time that allows them to kind of check in with themselves on how they're doing and create micro actions to move forward to do better. So I'll have that on my website too. And I'll, I'll have the backlinks for you, Howard, that your guests of the podcast are more than welcome to get for free. Fantastic. Well, we'll definitely do exactly what you just said we're going to do. I love that. Now, if our listeners want to learn more about you and your work, can you give them the uh, uh, the website URL so we've got that? Yeah, at newtidescoaching.com is where they can find me and everything about my business. And I'm also out on social media, but the primary place to come if you want to figure out who I am is the website. Fantastic. And yeah, we'll provide that uh, that link as well. The Also the Facebook and Instagram link, the social sites, because some people will go there and yep. we'll also provide the the backlink to the uh, the website so they can get your online deck. And I'm going to figure out how do I get a deck or maybe even individual cards as gifts for folks that uh, write a review to the podcast. Uh, that's one of the things I'm working on right now is how do I get more people listening to the podcast and liking it and reviewing it. So you've uh, perhaps I want to use your deck as one of those uh, uh, opportunities. So thank you for that. Kim, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you again. And uh, just really, I, I, I am grateful for our friendship. And we, we don't, when we were in, gra- in grad school and coach training, we talked all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and just, it's great to still be connected with you on LinkedIn and just uh, really see your success and Wish you much success with your your business at uh, New Tides Coaching and the the card deck. I think is absolutely wonderful. I can't wait to have that app on my phone. I'm probably going to go do that like right after this call. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much uh, for again for taking the time and go uh, go out to the beach, enjoy yourself. I'm a little envious. Uh, it's actually cooling off here in 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 uh, Nevada, so I may go up to the mountains a little bit or Red Rock oh, and nice. go watch watch a nice sunset or something later today yeah today is a perfect fall day and we still have a beautiful foliage going on here in new hampshire so uh i definitely plan on getting outside and maybe getting some apples there you go well uh you enjoy yourself thank you again for spending time with us and uh looking forward to staying in touch kim thank you so much for having me howard it's been really fun fantastic listen stay in the line we're gonna do a quick close and then you and i can have a, a final chat All right, folks, we've just been chatting with Kim Wilkes, leadership coach and founder of New Tides Coaching. Had a a nice uh, uh, walkthrough of her background and how she got to this moment of being uh, an entrepreneur, a business owner, a coach. And we had a great introduction at the beginning of the episode uh, where she shared online. So it's going to be on our video, which we'll put up on YouTube uh, the the deck of becoming a, a leader, uh, becoming and being a leader card deck, which is exciting. And uh, again, we're going to find a way to uh, get that deck out to a couple lucky winners who go out on Apple Podcast and write a review for this episode. Now, speaking of the episodes, you can find us on successinsightpodcast.com. We are also going to have the episode published on our LinkedIn and Facebook pages, Success Insight uh, podcast. And we are, of course, on all of the major podcast directories. So wherever you get your podcast, I'm sure you're going to enjoy uh, this episode today with Kim. All right, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. And we will see you on a future episode of the Coaching and Consulting Insight Series on the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com. 